Oh my God, folks, you are in for a treat. You know you're in for a good time when you hear that tune because it's time for another episode of the Rec Poker Podcast. This is episode number 605, the Chats Edition, where we talk to luminaries from all around the poker world. We also have a forums edition every week just talking strategy. Now, I'm your host, Jim Reed, Blusterini in the home game and at Rec Poker Jim on the hellscape that we call Twitter. And I have the best freaking job in the world talking poker with my friends here on the Rec Poker Podcast every Monday night at 7.30 Eastern, live on YouTube. And you can join us for free every week and win a prize just for showing up. Now, we're going to talk to bracelet winner Mark the Cookie Monster Chekwitz in just a moment. But first, I have to mention we're brought to you by Running Aces, the official sponsor of the Rec Poker Podcast. And that's really important because most of what we do here is free. Uh, we're a largely volunteer-based organization, so we really depend on the support from our sponsors and also from our premium members who take part in our training material and study opportunities and social events uh, for only 22 bucks a month. And we've actually uh, gotten quite a few premium members since I last got to host the show in June. So I want to just take a second here to shout out um, a few fantastic folks that are supporting uh, our mission here at Rec Poker. So Brian Mori, Bob Franklin, uh, Alex Pantoja, uh, Adam Workman, Brett Carlson, Joe Walton, Richard Day, William Baker, Scott Beckham, Daniel Jarrell, Christopher LaPlante, Ginger Lynch, Jesse Schrader, Gary Rains II, and Robin Whitman. Welcome to the Rec Poker family. That's a whole bunch of new cool folks I can't wait to get to know a little better. Um, thanks for throwing in your 22 bucks a month. I think you're going to find a lot of value in our premium membership for that. And you're also going to support this fantastic mission that we have uh, to make the poker world a better place, not just for recreational players, but mostly for recreational players. So uh, thanks for your support. And remember, folks, you can always get your first month of premium membership here at Rec Poker for only five bucks by using the code Rec Poker in checkout. And if that's too much, sign up for free. We've got a fantastic premium uh, uh, community membership that's free for anyone to join. All it takes is an email address and a smile, although we do insist on both. Now, uh, you get you get used to hearing my voice because they let me host the show on Mondays, but I am just one man. It takes a group, a gang, a village, a crew to make all the magic happen here at Rec Poker. We call this group of wizards the Wrecking Crew. And if you want to find out more about me or the rest of the Wrecking Crew, just go to rec.poker slash crew, or you can listen up because you're going to meet a few of them right here tonight on the show, starting with producing co-host Chris Jones. Well, I, for one, am glad to hear Jim's voice back on the show. For those of you who tuned in last week for the train wreck of an episode that I hosted, I am really delighted that he's back. But I am Chris Jones. You can find me 5B5 on Twitter or 5 by 5 in the Poker Stars home game. And I am John Somsky, also known as Poker Geek M and Everywhere. And when I am not running the home games, I am also glad that Jim makes it look much easier than it actually <laughs> is to host these uh, podcasts. And I'm Rob Washam. You can find me as Rabman50 just about everywhere. And I don't know what these two guys are talking about. I didn't have any problem running the uh, <laughs> podcast the day I did it. And you can also find me on the first and third Wednesdays of every month as we go through uh, our poker book study group. That's right. Just uh, a little taster's choice of what we get up to here uh, every month. Rob helps with the book studies. John Somsky runs our home game program. Chris Jones, aside from producing the co-host brilliantly, by the way, uh, uh, producing the podcast, also manages our monthly deep dive seminar and yeah i understand we had a couple technical difficulties while i was away thanks for making me look good gang if i can just hit an audio miscue every once in a while you know i like to keep it on the human level here so it is a hard job but we all have a great time doing it um all right so uh now you kind of know what you're in for mark uh welcome to the rec poker podcast i got a chance to meet up with uh the cookie monster himself in the poker org lounge down in las vegas this summer and uh, I was I was impressed. So I said, we got to get this guy on the show. So, Mark, let's just start off by saying thanks for coming on the Rec Poker Podcast, man. Well, you are very welcome. But mostly I'm very thankful for you guys having me because this is really, for me, is is everything that I wanted poker to be. It's like you you guys are all about making poker fun. And I'm down for it. I really am. <laughs> That's great, man. I can tell. And, and you're no, obviously you're a fun I, I'll, guy. I can tell. I, well, yeah. thank you. I am. I got dad jokes up the wazoo and, <laughs> and I'm ready. They're ready to go. 
right? yeah good that's that's where i keep my dad jokes too so that's a hand yeah, another so thing we the have wazoo is a very big big safety type, <laughs> you know so, so if folks if folks don't know if they don't know who the cookie monster is uh, or steamboat cookie monster we're gonna we're gonna talk about that that name at some point too and how you got it um but what they really need to know about you is pretty recently you had a, a pretty deep run um, in the World Series of Poker. There was a new tournament that was only unleashed this year, the Seniors High Roller. And uh, h- how'd you do? How'd you do in that one, uh, Mark? Listen, I won it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is everybody listening? This is this is actually possible. People can actually win poker tournaments. Like... <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. And and I got to see you wearing that fancy new piece of hardware, that beautiful bracelet. Fits great, looks good on you. Um congratulations, you. man. Is this even something that you thought was was possible uh, heading down to Las Vegas this summer? I did. I, you know, three, three months in the making, I was talking with, um, with my locals back home. And I really felt like that particular tournament was one that I could actually target and, and have a good shot at winning. Um, I do well as a 50 and over. Okay. Um, I have good energy level. And I think that showed actually on the on the stream um and you know i'm not facing four bets and five bets that that's pretty helpful mm, let's be honest that does you help. know I, I i'm watching the main event and it's like okay everything is just different um that be, being quite upfront that wasn't happening in the seniors tournament yeah yeah um so you get to see a few more flops you know that's always handy you get oh, to like, very good play post-flop. some yep i was gonna say get to play some post-flop poker which i know is something that you enjoy a lot yes sir so uh it, so this is obviously feels like you know at least a current peak in your development as a poker player not a lot of people get to go home with the bracelet um but you you've been a part of the poker scene for a long time you've not only as a player but sort of as an as an advocate for recreational players and for people to kind of understand the real picture of what uh, what the gambling world is all about. Uh, why don't you tell yeah, us a that, little bit? Tell, talk to us a little bit about that. That that evolution was kind of organic. Um, I'll, I'll try to be pretty quick, but I've been playing poker since I was a kid. Um, always loved the game. And we used to play um, in basements everywhere, you know, like one one, two, three board games. And I grew up around a bunch of tough Italian women, mm-hmm. including my mom, who, mm-hmm. who really wouldn't give an edge to me no matter what. So this this is a very p- uh, key part of who I am. Like I always try my best against everybody. Grandmas, kids, peers, whatever. You will get my best game, no soft play. And what I what I found as I evolved through, you know, um, poker games in basements, even in casinos, there there'd be just a lot of angling, cheating. It, it rubbed mm. me the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And how it evolved for me, I, I kind of stepped away from the game for a while, but I did I did come back around the the Chris Moneymaker era. My friend, you know, just told me like you got to try No Limit Hold'em. I think you'd be good. And he, he, he nailed it. It was for me, it was like a duck taking to water from the very first time I played this game because I was a fish in limit poker, just an absolute fish. And I found a place where I could chase gut shots. And this is kind of relevant <laughs> to, to my tournament and actually get paid for them in right. a way that made them sometimes profitable. Mm-hmm. And so I really had fun playing and and really at around 2003, I was uh, 41. I was playing with a bunch of World War II vets, great guys. But for the life of them, they kept telling me, keep playing like that kid and you're going to find the door. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so shots and flesh draws, that's my thing. And 
and you know, I'd love to get around to the Cookie Monster story, but the bottom line is, I, I saw these young guys just so serious. You know, they were they were going to make their living with this game, and and I just you know dressed up with this Cookie Monster outfit, and they had no idea that I knew what I was doing, <laughs> and and. And it really, I, I think there are still some questions. The greatest quote I ever heard from a friend of mine, he said, this guy Tom said to his buddies at dinner one time, he's like, I don't get Cookie Monster. He's like, he's a fish, but he's a good fish. <laughs> and <laughs> and oh. I I have lived up to that. I think when you if you watch the stream, I look like a damn good fish. Yeah. There you go. I think we might have found our new tagline here at Rec Poker. Actually, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> good um, fish poker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. We had a, a we had a, a series of articles on our blog by a Wrecking Crew member Joseph Wills about uh, uh, being a better fish, and uh, it feels like that's that's something for, for us all to aspire to. Uh, aspire to. So I'll just remind our, our folks: if you're in the YouTube chat and you've got a question for Mark, if you want to know what it's like to win a gold bracelet at the World Series of Poker, now's your chance. Um, and of course, we're also going to be playing stake study stack with Mark later in the show. So enter your names of famous poker players that you'd like Chris Jones to consider uh, for that game. And of course, we're also going to give away a prize at the end of the show uh, for folks that participate in our raffle to support a local food bank. So stick around to the end of the show. Um, we're not going to ask for any money, but we're going to give you a chance to raise awareness for a local food bank. And we're going to give away uh, a great prize as part of that. And of course, if you'd like to support what we're doing here, uh, and if you're one of those shiny, fancy people that can make a donation through YouTube, then uh, by fee by all means, please make leave a super chat and uh, buy us a cup of coffee. That way we share a portion of all our YouTube donations with a local food bank as well. So get active in the YouTube chat, folks. And if you're listening along at home, um, I'd encourage you next, next Monday at 7.30 Eastern, jump into the chat and uh, win a prize for free by joining us live here on YouTube. All right, so Mark, you, you're you very experienced with poker. I wanna get right into what this tournament felt like. Um, you, what what was the buy-in for the tournament? Did it, did you take it all on yourself? How did you sort of like prepare? You're a family man as well. So like entering into a large poker tournament has like a, a gravitas, as a recreational yes. player that that isn't really there for pros. Tell us a little bit about sort of like how you approached entering this tournament in the first place. So I was never going to put up $5,000 to enter a poker tournament. Um, right. I think the most I had ever put up for a poker tournament to then was $1,100. Um, so I had, I went out early. I played the super seniors, which is 60 and over. And I min cashed that. So I picked up a thousand dollars. Nice. And and I mean, you know, for full transparency here, look, you know, I invested in this crazy stock a year ago with the idea that okay, if I made money, I would take some out and and go for this this shot. And I did actually 4x my money. Amazing. And yeah. So and good for you so for, for buying me, stock in rec poker back then, by the way, because uh, really it was it's amazing. It's like, yeah, yeah, great. Decision. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> 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 I think okay. it's still a pretty good idea, by the way. <laughs> um, so it was uh, for me, like dealing with with gambling and gambling is a relationship. You know? So I'll start in that 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 really defies thinking about your family and other relationships yeah. while you're doing it. Right. And and anybody who's who's recreational or not, anybody who's serious about winning a poker tournament or or making money in a cash game is not thinking about, you know, the the new plumbing that's got to go in or, you know, the stove is going or anything. They're not thinking about parenting, husbanding, wifing. They're thinking about how do I win this hand and then the next and then the next. So it has a very um, involved, you know, it's very involving. And so I, I really, I, I do, I became much more sympathetic to my wife and the sacrifices that she made. She's from a small mm. town in Costa Rica. There's no gambling there. Um, this is not the lifestyle that she expected to marry into. Um, and I was not sympathetic in the beginning. 
I was mm -hmm. much more narcissistic about it, but I became so. And, and for me to be able to make this happen, I needed to show her that these um, things were aligned and that I had money, you know, left over. I had jobs lined up as a house painter. Um, and there would be no impact other than, you know, I'd be giving up a portion of the money I made in this stock for the last year. So I took the money out and I went to, went to Las Vegas and I was, it was a long shot for me to play this 5,000, this 5k. It really was because of the, the amount. But once I won the extra thousand, I reached out to a bunch of friends that I play with back home and um, the Venmo just started popping and and it didn't stop until I had, I believe, around 3,400 um, in backing, which includes, yep. by the way, $100 that I insisted that my wife give me if she wanted a piece of the winning. <laughs> so, <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. This, because this is work for me. There, there's yeah. a level, especially at that level, this is work. And um, so, yeah, I put up 1,600. So I have a little less than, I have about 30%. Yep. And um, the 70% is being shared by the by the friends and family who uh, believed in me. And they did. They did believe in me. And it's it was incredible to see that um, the faith that they had in me. It's amazing. Um, I had a kind of a similar experience. You're you're aware uh, yeah. over the course of the last couple of weeks. Um, I, I hope you and, share it. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, trust me. Rec poker is going to hear about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also, I also sort of put out, put up the bat signal and said like, who, who wants to come along on this journey? And um, I also kept about, about 30%, about 31%, something like that and sold a little over two thirds. And it's, it's, it's both like an amazing feeling of like support and encouragement and buy-in while at the same time, I don't know if you felt this, but I felt like, oh man, I, I really hope I perform well for these people. <laughs> that are now like, yeah, oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, they were they they were excited, right? They were excited yeah. for you. You felt it. I know. Again and again, I was reading these tweets. I saw it, <laughs> felt it. It was, uh, you know, this shared journey. I think we lose sight of the fact. Pros definitely have lost sight of the fact that. Um, that shared journey is actually a good thing. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I think, you know, there's been a lot of um, overlap of that being, you know, turning into I owe makeup to this guy and I will make up to right. that one if you don't cash. And, and for me, it was never going to be that, you know, you, people took a piece of me, I made money or didn't make money. I didn't mark it up. There isn't, there wasn't going to be any makeup. Um, so when I won this money, I owed them but I didn't owe any gambling debt to anybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, rec poker, recreational poker is highlighted by the fact that, you know, you don't have these entanglements um, that you're dealing with people following you to the payout window or whatever, you know, yeah, right, right. So that we hear about and we do hear about it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, that, so, I mean, it's, it, it's a fantastic story. You got a chance to, take part in this tournament that was like punching a little above your weight, but you had the success in the series early. You had this rail of people that like loved you and supported you that wanted to come along. Yeah. And then, and then so, you just kicked butt, right? I mean, well, it's amazing. well, Jim, I do have to tell you about how poorly I played. Okay. <laughs> okay yeah, and and this is, this is the best part because I can really, <laughs> I can really do that the amplitudinal move between good fish and good player and um it's like i sat down with fifty thousand in chips 100 200 blinds and i pretty quickly calculated this is 250 big blinds so we're going to have some long, long play here yeah. um there were only five of us sitting at the table to start uh four actually on the first mm -hmm. hand mm -hmm. and um i was the first button and i got ace jack off suit it's folded to me, it will one fold and it's to me. And I raise to 400, I get called from the small blind. And the flop is 10, four, three with two hearts. I have the ace of hearts and um, small blind checks. I bet, and he check raises me pretty big. Like, oh boy. and I'm just not having it. 
I'm really, you know, I am going to put my foot down right here and right now that I'm just not having it. I hand number off. one. So, Set the yes, tone. hand number one. I, I bet 400. He makes it 2200. I snap called him. Okay. And I did. I did because I just wanted the the message to be sent. A king hits the turn. This is perfect for me. It gives me does, does give me a gut shot, but I can represent the king. That's my card 100% of the time. But he leads into me for 3200. Mm. And again, I'm just not having it. <laughs> like, like it's not a king of hearts. Um, so I snap called the 3200, and there's the queen of diamonds on the wow. ring. Wow. And I have just made the absolute nuts. And he's he checks, and I just go for it. I think I bet 15,000. And now this is the first hand. Okay. <laughs> And he is just in the tank now. So I know he's got a big hand. And it was indeed a set. A set of threes or something it, like that. Yeah, yeah he gets off the set of threes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah. so he has to call me. I mean, he he just, he cannot put me on a hand that beats him. And he does, in fact, call. And he sees, gets the bad news. Oh. And he's trying to put it, he's trying to put it all together like, Okay, not but now he's just pissed. I mean, I'm just gonna use the word here. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't even set up his backpack yet. He now he gets he gets up, he sets up his backpack behind his chair. He, he goes around, we pick up another player, but a few hands later, I'm the small blind to his big blind, and I limp in with five, six of spades, and he raises again to like sixteen hundred. And we're at one hundred, two hundred here. It's the right. fifth hand. Okay. And I call now. No, I had four or five of spades, excuse me. And the flop comes out five, four, four. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man. So, so he he has, I'm just gonna tell you, he's got ace three. He bets, oh. I raise, he calls, and there's a deuce on the turn. Oh wow. And, and he is out wow. the door in five yeah. hands. Yeah. Yeah. And he you messed with the wrong guy even fathom yes yeah. <laughs> but but it, it here's the part where you know okay it's kind of it's kind of goofy i chased the gut shot um but you know i had like you know this this reasoning that kind of made sense but here i am now I'm stacking up his chips and i've got over you know a hundred thousand and the 100s are pink and dark pink and the five thousands are dark pink and pink oh and they're boy. like the polar opposite opposite of each other yeah. so well you know where this is going so i've stacked them now and a new guy sits in in this guy's seat and he has to he has to wait a hand i think it was but the the next hand he plays he raises i call with nine ten off suit i guess i was big blind i forget how this went down but it was pretty sure. quick nine ten big blind i call um the 400 okay the 200 dollar raise but what whoops there's a 5,000 in there. And I've just made it 5,300. <laughs> <laughs> and my hand, my hand goes after the, the 5,000 chip, but it is obviously way too late. Yeah. And I pull it back, but that is also way too late. He knows yeah. that I've made a mistake. And before I know it, he, he's made it 15,000. And I'm not having it, Jim. I'm not having it. I got a hundred thousand in chips. I took two more of the dark pink. I said, call. So I'm pot committed now. And um with my nine ten off suit, the flop was Jack Eight Seven Rainbow. Oh my God, Mark. Thank wow. You. <laughs> what an amazing way to start this tournament. This is fantastic. So I don't want to pretend for a moment that I was just, you know, playing this great poker the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> I was obviously chip leader after after like six or seven hands. And yeah. you know, I did have some dark times in there. There were some some moments. Um, but but that's that's how I started and you know how I ended. Yeah. So, well, bookends. Well, and I'll tell you, man, I've always said about poker, especially large field tournament poker, sometimes it's just about making the wrong play at the right time. You know, making the crazy? wrong mistake at the right time and like getting into a hand. A misclick, like a a physical misclick that ends up in the pot being such a size when this board comes out, like incredible. incredible. It happens way. It, it happens a non-trivial amount of the time. 
Um, and that's, it's trivial. Like, that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah, an experienced poker player, Jim, but I'll tell you, I was so giddy after taking this guy out in five hands. And <laughs> I really just like I was laughing. I couldn't help it. The other guys down at the other end. And they were laughing too. They just couldn't believe oh, that this yeah. guy were watching his ass go out the door. <laughs> Fifty thousand in chips, and he's he's <laughs> done five k yeah. in five hands. Oh my god! Oh. Yeah, so, yeah. That's a that's that's a crazy way. And what a great dynamic to start that table off. To, oh, so how long? Yes. How long were you at that? Like before that table broke? How many hours? All day. Were you playing at that table? All day. We played that table oh, that's all great. day. And the that's greatest great. part is this: the guy I beat with the ten nine. He got yeah. away from it for um, like twenty eight thousand because he bet okay. I, I raised and he did fold. Okay. Um, so only cost. So he lasted. Time. He lasted all day. We yeah. went ten hours, and I took him <laughs> out on the last hand of, of the day. <laughs> That's how I swear <laughs> that is exactly. He he went down to crumbs. He built it up to a monster <laughs> stack, and I I took him out. I mean he he went back down. I did. I took him out in the last hand of the day. Yeah. That last hand of the day can be devastating for, for some. I saw a few people bust on the last hand of the day, uh, like getting it in with uh, with good hands pre-flop and just like never it, realizing that that was the last hand they were going to play in the tournament. Well, it, this was, you know, I did get back down to, um, I think I only had nine big blinds when this hand yeah. started. And I was the yeah. last big blind of the day. I had ace mm. ten off suit. He was the one who moved all in, and you know he had three thousand chips less than I did. So it was effectively right. our tournament, one way or the other. But yeah. I called him with ace ten, and he he had queen ten, and the flop came out jack nine, and I had to sweat the you know the turn in the river, but right. I got there. <laughs> and, uh, it's crazy. It it was such a crazy ride. Yeah. Um, how how long was the tournament? Um, like before you got to the final table. We went 21 hours. Yeah. So two over, days. Over, over two days. Yeah. 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 The third day we were, we were like a few hands into um, the third day when we got to yep. the final table. And uh, when we got down to nine, I had the, I had Angela Jordison on my, on my right. Excellent and, player. Uh, excellent player. And she had just got coolered on the last hand of essentially the last hand of day two Kings versus aces. Mm. Um which were which I folded queens by the way five hand and I folded queens in this hand for one big blind. Um, this was wow. a crazy hand. She she was the big blind. I limped in with queens. Um, the second ship leader made it five um, x, so it was like 40 k. He made it two hundred, and I had just finished telling my friends that she had kind of shut it down, and that if she was in a hand, it was going to be with a very strong hand, like three yep. minutes before this hand, and she made it six ninety right before me and i'm looking at my queens again i'm in for i've limped in with queens and it's five x and then three and a half x over that and i knew she had a big hand and um i let it go i folded queens um, that's what and, a hell of a letdown like what a lay down because you're you, even when you limp you're like oh i can't wait to induce some action here and get oh in i was waiting queens. for this moment theoretically right um but i was up against aces and kings yeah it's the yeah, craziest yeah, yeah. five-handed I was yeah. up against aces and kings. She got coolered. Now I got her to my right. And and I have twice as many chips as she does. She was the chip leader all of day one, all of day two till that end. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to take her out. I got jack 10. She raised a small blind, a big blind. I've got, like I said, twice as many chips as she does. And um, it comes, flop comes ace, queen, three. And she bets very small. And it was like, wow, she's got a big hand. It's like a set or top two. It, it just felt that way to me. Um, so I just like, I really thought about the call here that if I call this one, I have to call the next one. I'm not giving mm -hmm. up after one because I need to get two cards. And if I take her out, I'm doing myself a huge favor. Yeah. Um, and a deuce on the turn and a king on the river. And she did indeed have top two before ace queen. And um, that's how she went out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. unhappily, of course, and I don't blame her. I, I really don't. But she was very gracious afterward. Very gracious. Yeah, afterward. yeah. I I tell everyone, you know, you're welcome. To what I what I refer to as the toe stub window, which is as soon as you bust the tournament, you're allowed to be salty 
for as long yeah. as you would if you just like stubbed your toe really badly and you're hopping around your living room like cursing this. and like but then you gotta like you know compose yourself and be a gentleman again but you know we all are human and we you know th- this is a pretty pretty high oh, emotion hundred percent hundred percent yeah 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 so so then but, but so again, then you're she on... was very gracious after i yeah. saw her afterward no she's great so then you're at the final table and now you've you've picked up some chips and uh was it sort of kind of smooth sailing from then or or were there were there highs and so lows one or... more one more key hand and it is the last hand that i was all in for um bruno lopez is now the chip leader um he's cool shan he's a french rapper i didn't know about this until later and um he's got over two million in earnings again i didn't do any research on any <laughs> i played this i played this and i tell you i do research you know i've won a few tournaments i always look who i'm playing what my i was just going on the reads that i got on these people as i played along through these days yeah and i didn't want to be affected by their their earnings i didn't want anything else to cloud my the way I was thinking. Um, I'm big blind in this hand. He's a small blind. Under the gun raises. Um, I think the blinds now were 100. He makes it 250. And three people call, including including Bruno. And I call out of the small blind, or big blind rather, with, with 10 up suit. So here's my bookend hand. And the flop comes down six, seven, eight rainbow. <laughs> exactly exactly it's like it, i haven't flopped just the straight but it's the one that's going to remain the nut straight yes yeah um, unless it it just it, it's actually unless going you get to counterfeit. remain the nut straight yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. so um no flush draw so bruno checks and i just let out into the into the other the other players and um i got called and then and then a, a big raise from the guy I end up going heads up with um for the championship. He raises like seven X. And then it's folded back to Bruno, who goes all in. Oh my he's god. He's the chip leader. Yes. So that's how it went. A call seven X all in, and I'm holding the absolute nuts. Wow. And and uh yeah. So I know there's a set out there, obviously. But I'm also thinking, wow, I guess we're I might even be chopping this one. Sure. And I don't know who it is that has the the straight. So I really took forever to make this call. Um, but I do make the call, obviously. And now it's folded back to this guy, Ari, who made the original race, and he's got top set. And he open folds it eventually <laughs> after a very he folded top set in this hand. <laughs> and Bruno had bottom set. Wow. And of course, now he's just seeing, he gets the bad news and he's seen two of his outs just go right into the muck. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Yeah. And um, he doesn't get there. And, and really, really from there, it was, it was a cruise and I just wow. enjoyed the ride. Yeah. I bet you did. <laughs> I, I did. I had, I had so much fun on that stage. I just couldn't, I couldn't stop talking. I couldn't yeah. stop smiling. I yeah. was, you know, cheering on the rails for everybody else because I, I really, I love these guys. I love them all. Um, and, and I just really, you know, I had so much fun with the banter. Um, one guy wanted my MTV hat that I was wearing and, and the next day, well, I told him he had to go heads up with me to get it or knock me out. Oh. And uh, he did it. I ended up knocking him out, but I told him I'd give it to him the next day. We met up the next day and I did, I gave him my uh, MTV hat. That's so pretty fun. cool hat, actually. I mean, it sounds like it. And now I it's mean, got so a bit it of was. Story. We made it a rec poker type of final table. You know, we weren't tanking. We were just playing. We were talking. Yep. I think Lon Lon says so. We're on the main stage, which is great, right where the the main event final table is going to be. Um, and Lon is just saying, "Look, it's like these guys are in a hot tub," and and just <laughs> chatting. really, that's really how it felt too. Like. So much fun. I just had that's, the time of my awesome. life. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. So folks, folks that, that haven't heard yet, um, I I got a chance to play in the main event uh, this year because of folks like Mark, um, who ended up. So I, I, I made the snap decision uh, on day one, a 
that I was missing out on this fun too much. I was in Vegas. I had some bankroll left over from my own play. And um, I was going to see if, if if I could sell enough action to get into the main. And Mark, you came along for for one percent. And I just the only felt... person that I backed, by the way, <laughs> the only person, which is totally crazy. <laughs> I had plenty of money to back people. It's true. I, it's took, true. I only took your action, sir. That's it. <laughs> That's amazing. Pretty it amazing. Is. And I, I really felt I felt you uh, on my shoulder the whole way uh, on Twitter. You were such a good influence there. Uh, very encouraging and supportive. You got you reminded me to drink a lot of water at several points, oh. which I needed that reminder. That was really good, uh, good, helpful information. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And it and it like it really did. It, it was a very like it was a very fun experience. It was a very like so. So tell me a bit about like the people that took a piece of you and like what what kind of pleasure you take from being up like so how much money did you win you you took first place in this tournament how much money did you win yeah um you know the top top line number is five hundred and seventy four thousand, which is incredible it's incredible i mean there's a lot of that's going to happen after the fact and that's all going on now and i don't want to talk about any of that but no, the top line number goes right to my hand in my and I yeah, 48,000th 48, in the country to 4,700. So, <laughs> so there. <laughs> and I have this long running prop bet with this guy who's going to have the biggest hand in the mob at X point. And I'm yeah. telling you, I crushed his soul right there. Yeah. <laughs> he was ahead of me by 100 grand, and he's got some work to do now. <laughs> I love to hear it. Yeah. I love to hear it. Um, but, um, yeah. So, a lot of people, six people took 10%. Um, and wow. I, I got to hear, and again, this is all still to, to happen. There's a, you know, a lot involved with, um, taxes and 1099s and stuff. Yeah. It's but a huge pain in the ass to be honest. There, you know, one of them is buying a car for his son who just graduated. One of them is going to, you know, was just recently divorced, um, gets custody of his son on weekends, but didn't have a house. He's going to put a down payment on a house. Um, another one is taking his family on a long awaited vacation. Uh, it's it's been nothing short of great to, yeah. to hear how that money is just look I have uses for mine too we're gonna pay off you know all my debt um and and finally just just feel like a little breathing room mm -hmm. um you know wife yeah. and and two kids you know um paying for college and I went back and got my own degree um mm -hmm. in 2020 actually mm -hmm. in human services mm -hmm. social work and I actually studied oh, cool. gambling addiction so um, that's part of why I wanted, I do wanted to talk, I did want to talk about that because, because winning is so exciting and, and, and it always, the hand in mob looks so amazing, but people don't see the truth. There's no transparency. Right. Yeah. Like, Among, like we, we've, we've mentioned before the hand in mob shows cashes and winnings, but it doesn't show net winnings it doesn't show the buy-ins and the rebuys it doesn't yes, show all the times yes. that you played and got nothing like 85 percent of the people do that enter every tournament because only the top 15 percent get paid by far most of tournament poker is an experience of losing and of dealing with loss and losing money yes and being so, discouraged so if you're not entertained with mm, the process yeah. you have made a tremendous mistake Day entering <laughs> that's you, a great no point. really it, yeah even if, even if it hurts to bubble you must feel like you were entertained mm. for that money because uh, otherwise it's just nothing but an emotional disaster yeah and, and you've kind of spoken about the negative aspects of gambling um and how it can be a trap for some people and i know that's something that i think you know, you think it's a, it's important to, to to deliver this full package of information about poker and about the upsides sure. and the downsides. Is there anything in particular that you want to share with our audience about the the downsides of gambling or the dangers of uh, 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 of having the wrong mindset or the wrong um, uh, relationship to to gambling? You've used the right word, actually. My friend and I, and I do want to give a shout out to my friend um, Jamie Salzberg. S A L S B U R G. He's at after gambling on Twitter and at Jamie Salzberg on Twitter. And he has a podcast, the after gambling mm -hmm. podcast, Jamie, Jamie had to quit. 
Um, it really just became too obsessive. It was interfering with his relationships too much. And so he quit, I think about 12 years ago. I came across him uh, during the pandemic and we started exchanging these ideas that, okay, the, the problem gambling messaging, the responsible gambling messaging, we both hate it. And I just want to say it, okay, responsible gambling, it, it's never responsible to throw down $5,000 to look at rectangles. Yeah. And we have to call it for what it is. That's not responsible behavior. You are, that is self-indulgent. I mean, by anybody's <laughs> right. stretch. Okay. And, yeah. and let's be honest about it. That's all. I just want to be honest about it. I'm gambling. Okay. And when I won that tournament, Jim, this true story, every bit of my bankroll for that trip was riding on that tournament. I had $2 left in my wallet right before the last hand was dealt. <laughs> a guy, this is true. I'm like the scout's honor. A guy came with a Red Bull and a drink for me and a water. I gave him the two bucks. And when I won a minute later, and it was just a minute later, I had zero dollars in my wallet, zero in my hotel room. <laughs> and if I had not won, I was just rebooking my flight and going home early. And okay, this is like degenerate behavior, but it's like a good degenerate. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. So this is the complication that my friend and I, Jamie, wanted to address. So we came up with this concept of be a better gambler. And I really mm -hmm. want to stress that there are ways for everybody along the spectrum of their gambling life to be better at what they're doing. Um, when you win big, don't don't go to a slot machine. Right. Really, poker players, like, don't go to a table. Don't indulge that part of you that just says, I need a quick fix. And because it takes so much work to win at a game like poker, it's the greatest metaphor for life. It, it, it teaches you that things are constantly changing. You have to adjust to those changes. I love this game with all my heart, but I hated the fact that I, I would just like think, oh, I won 1200. Let me try to win 300 more at a blackjack table because 1500 is the number somehow I've decided right. that I want. Right. Yeah, and yeah. and the lesson, you know, very quickly, the where I learned my lesson, I had eight hundred dollars. I had one, and Jim, I wanted to make it a thousand, and the the way to do that was to bet two hundred dollars on my way out the door at a blackjack table. I've got my cousin and my friend right next to me, and now I'm looking at two eights, and the dealer has a six. <laughs> and I'm, I'll I'll shorten the story. Before you know it, I have split eights three times, double down twice. I now have a thousand dollars riding on this hand. The dealer turns over a six. Everybody is cheering and whack hits the five. Thank you. Right. Yeah. And yeah. this is the lesson I needed to learn that I had spent six hours playing poker, grinding out for 800 bucks. And I lost it all in a minute and a half Yeah. because I was stupid. <laughs> and well, it's a, Really, again, I'm calling it what it is. I was greedy. Yeah, yeah, and yep. and I I lost sight of the respect for the game of of poker, mm. respect for gambling, mm -hmm, and the relationship mm -hmm. with money. And I think that's pretty common. So Jamie yeah. and I have worked on that, and um, here's the result. I mean, I think this is the crowning achievement: winning a bracelet, despite the fact that I did it with all my bankroll. That was a decision I really talked about with my wife and with him. Yep. Like, you know what? I decided this is what I wanted to do. And I'd come home if I didn't, if I didn't make anything. Yep. And it sounds like, and you went into it with a plan, you know, you had this windfall from the stock market. You were responsible with how you kind of defrayed the variance by, by selling a, you know, a portion of it to, to your friends. Exactly. Exactly. And that, you know, that, that I, I think going into it with a plan, is already separating you from a lot of the people that actually struggle with gambling addiction, for instance, who are who are much more sort of like reacting to the the emotions of of gambling and winning and losing and the highs and lows and the the, the emotional draw to that. Um, Which is the mindset part is very tough. So what right. we talk about all the time is when you go to gamble, you need to be aware of why you're gambling. Are you escaping mm. something or are you really in the right mindset to play a good game of poker? Mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. the final the final point on this i'll make is i give an interview i gave an interview right after i won and and i explained you know what i was going to do with the money that this is what i had been here for 
um, and that I was not going to play in the main event. There wasn't going to be any quote unquote spin it up. And and I faced a lot of pushback from the people who backed me. Come on, you got to do it. You're hot. You're this. You're that. Like I'm not in the right mindset to play mm. the main event. Mm-hmm. And you saw me in the poker lounge. You know, I was I was actually the first interview. I just want to point out I was also <laughs> the inaugural interview <laughs> in that Legends Poker Oil uh, yeah. Lounge. Yeah, okay? yeah. So, <laughs> but but you saw me. I was just happier than a than could like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to play any more poker. I just right. wanted to to bask in that moment for as long as I can, and I I'm still doing it. You know. Yeah. Good for you, man. Good for you. Well, Thank it looks you. good on you. It looks almost as good as that Steelers colored hat that you're wearing right now. Full points. You know, by my the way, son that... bought me. Yes, my son bought me this hat. This is great. We're really aligned here. People can't see it, but <laughs> but I do want to ask you about this on this issue. Okay. Do you, is there any part of you that feels like you lost nine million nine hundred and forty thousand dollars? <laughs> I mean. I think it's natural. Every 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 tournament I've ever busted out of, like at literally every tournament that I haven't won, I've been bittersweet about. Yeah. Because like every great finish that isn't first place, you like you could have done better. Uh, you know, but there's yeah. there's 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 no why not me about this one at all. And this was in my case, it was such a gift to get to a a personal threshold that I'd set for myself and then to be able to go out on a hand like pocket Queens versus ACE 10 to get it in good like that. And to feel like, okay, that's how I busted, which I was inevitably going to do. Um, Of course I would have liked to win all the money Mark and to like get the bracelet. But uh, I actually, I, I don't, I don't really feel like I, like I like left it out there. Um, I really feel like I kind of uh, took what was available for me and the rest was was meant for other people. And, I, you know, that I actually feel a great calmness about it that that I wasn't really That's expecting, fantastic. to be honest with you. I wasn't really expecting that. Um, so I think it, I think it helps know. getting a big paycheck helps. Like I, I was more I was more busted up busting the main a couple of years ago at the end of day two. Uh so, something yeah. about something about getting a check for sixty thousand dollars from the World Series of Poker organization uh, sort of makes some of that pain go away. Yeah. Uh, it's more sweet on the bittersweet scale this time, for sure. Yeah. So I did what want about... to ask how you, how your wife how your wife feels about so. Your journey. So this is amazing that you ask this because I know your your you know your wife is a, is a big part of your life and your poker story, and and my wife. Um, who goes by Mrs. Blusterini because she's also a very private person. Uh, my my username is Blusterini, so uh, that's that's kind of her her role in in the rec poker world. She's very supportive of me and my the time that I spend at rec poker and and being able to travel around and play. I found out this after the fact. So my wife works with horses, and while I was in Las Vegas, there was an a, an incident at the barn. And she was knocked over and she sprained her wrist wow. quite badly, quite badly, and was in a in a mobilized uh, situation. And she was having a lot of trouble doing things that normally you would do with two hands and like just not be worried about. And she had a chance to tell me about this about two days before I decided to play the main. And if she had, I snap, get on a plane and I'm home. Yep. I don't even think about playing the main. I take care of her for that extra week and a half. And like, it's not even a decision. I just go one for five in the bracelet events I played that summer. And then like, that's the story of my summer. But she intentionally hid from me that she had hurt herself in this way because she wanted me to continue and have this trip. And so then like two days later, I'm texting with her. I'm like, hey, honey, like a bunch of people have supported this vision of, this chance for me to come play the main. I think I'm going to play the main. Like I'll be gone a few, a few extra days, but I'm going to play the main event. And she's like, honey, I'm so proud of you, you know, go in and have a great time and win a bunch of money and like cross this off the bucket list. And she never told me that she was like unable to cut her own food at the table or to like take the garbage out or whatever. So I get back 
from and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna stay one more day and run some errands and like do some shit. She's like, okay, but like come home as soon as you can. And then I I get home and she's like, she's in this wrist uh, wrap up, wow. and I'm like, you know, I just I'm struck by this idea that like she through her sacrifice really caused this to happen and like if she had just said you know jim i'm hurt come home it wouldn't even have been a decision to uh, for me and and by like taking the sacrifice and like being in pain for this time and for just like not letting that be on my mind i decided to try to see if i could get this action i decided to play the main i was patient you know as hell on days like four and five and i didn't like say oh well you know worst case i flip it here and i lose and i go home and take care of no, my wife. you really were i was very impressed and i mean that sincerely thank like thank you like you you delivered on a on a like that like you said a patient targeted approach looking for the spot that would help yep. you to spin it up um yeah and and you got it i mean you had you had that run and i'll tell you what sometimes that run just keeps right on going yeah. And and sometimes it runs out of steam and, and gets taken out by a three outer on the river. Yeah. Um, yep. But you got a story that's just so fantastic. Oh, so yeah. Kudos and to I... your marriage and to the to your love story. You know, we have that here at home. Mm. And it, mm-hmm. it's hard work. And, it, and it's just a reminder that gambling or not gambling, you have to take care of the relationships that matter. And um yeah. I've got a wife that calls herself Cookie Momster. I saw that. I love yeah. that so much. I saw that on Twitter. That's so cool, man. <laughs> That's so cool. And there, there's yeah. Cookie Monster stuff all over our house. She's got it in the car. And <laughs> it's just like she just embraced this character that um yeah. I, she's she's embraced the 12 year old in me. And mm. obviously your wife has too. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think she sees the big lovable dork that I am. And yeah, uh I, you know, I saw it yeah. too. I she can tell you like, did. <laughs> I buddy right up to the lovable dork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Mark, <laughs> it's true. We were laughing like this right away. We were. It's true. It's true. No, we picked yeah. it up immediately. So I think we've got a lot of uh, we've got a big uh, fun future together, pal. I'm looking forward to to getting. Uh, I would love even. to be you know part of growing the the rec poker thing. I mean, I never heard about you guys until that moment that that mm. two minute intersection of time where we met. Yeah, um, that led to this. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think, you know, the future is bright. And it's one of the things I love most about Rec Poker. You know, I I joined, I've been listening to the podcast since the beginning, but I joined as a premium member in 2019. And, uh, you know, all the amazing people I've met through this organization and on the Wrecking Crew and, and guests like yourself, you know, some of my best friends in the world now are are folks that I've met through Rec Poker. And that's not um, hyperbole. So, um, yeah, thanks to everyone here who's who's allowed this great operation to continue and to be as great as it is and, yeah, it's more than just poker. It's, there's really more than just it, poker. So we're all we're all very lucky. I uh, I can see that actually. It, it's really obvious. Yeah, know? yeah. Well, I think uh, Mark, we're going to have a chance to speak again at some point. Um, you've been very generous with your time. Uh, I know Chris is unmuting because we're about to get into stake study stack oh, and maybe so some other ready questions. for the stake. Okay. Is it a T bone? <laughs> <laughs> nice, no? nice. Uh, Chris, so uh, why don't you jump in there with whatever was on your mind? Well, before we get in there, I was going to say, I think we're getting into stake study stack. Uh, I'm just like, I'm like, my heart's kind of like full uh, on the Mrs. Bluffsterini story. Isn't that and awesome? Also, it's just awesome, yeah, Chris. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Wow. But the other thing, I think before we get into stake study stack, I think uh, we'd be remiss because we were promised an explanation of the cookie monster moniker. Where, where <laughs> right. is it? So, well, t- so tell I'm me about the cookie it, monster. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it as, as, past but remain <laughs> remain true to the story so i have a son with down syndrome um he was you know he, he he's very cd things don't go his way he melts down there's still some of that you know a little bit today even he's 22 now but many years ago i was a one a one day a week regular my wife and i would give each other one day out no phone calls no troubles mine was saturday night and i went down to foxwoods with my mom who was on my shoulder also throughout this whole tournament um and again when jim and i talk next time we're going to talk we're going to talk moms and dads here but yeah but the bottom yeah. line is we're in a sears and we're, we're taking people back quite a few years now we're in a sears and andrew sees this cookie monster outfit and he wants it but it's for adults and it comes with a shirt a long sleeve shirt with that big cookie monster and i was wearing it on the final table and it comes with a beanie 
with it's blue and it's got it's got big googly eyes and he wants it but we're trying to explain to him it's not for kids and and like okay we try to we go down to the kids section and my gosh there is nothing no cookie monster stuff in the kids section so i go back to the adult section and i buy the outfit i go to the changing room i put it on and andrew is instantly entertained and i started doing the voice da 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 long story shorter I decide, I tell my wife, I'm wearing it around the house all the time now. I said, you know what? I'm taking this down to Foxwoods and I'm going to, <laughs> I got a plan. Okay. I'm going to hide it like Clark Kent underneath a suit or a jacket. And <laughs> I've got the beanie in my pocket. And I'm waiting for the right moment when I say me all in. <laughs> and um, I, there it is. I call a raise with a pair of eights. And and this is why it was amazing when I was looking over at 888 poker was right over my my view. Um, it took me back to the story because I flopped a set of eights. Oh, wow. And it's top set. It's eight, six, deuce. The betting goes this way, that way with the pre-flop raiser. We end up being the only two going to the turn. And, and an ace hits the, the turn. And I'm like, the way the betting went, I know he's probably got an ace king. And it's just walked right into my plan. And um, bing, bang, boom. He has raised me. And um, now I have the moment. And I take the jacket off. I put the beanie on. I stand up and the whole table is like just now watching. Other tables have gotten up because they're making noise. And I do the whole, whole shtick, Jim. Me all in, and and the guy snap calls me with a set of aces, <laughs> <laughs> and oh, and the whole table has risen to this crescendo of like oh oh, oh like and and boom, burn and turn, and I made quads. Wow! wow. Oh my! True God. story, and the legend of the Cookie Monster was born, <laughs> and that's all anybody would call me. When I went down there. So I just started wearing it every time I went to Foxwoods. Oh my God. Like, That's so fantastic. Go. Yep. And, and I'm still a luck box to this day. I mean, obviously, if you see any of these hands on, on that street, <laughs> luck box city. I'm a good fish. Very good fish. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> no one, no one makes it far in a large field MTT uh tournament without getting without flop, flopping some bad beats on people and getting lucky Thank here you. and there. Yeah. You know, so I is. mean, yeah, certainly man, uh, my I, ace I king ran into ace queen over and over and over again. Ace king, ace queen, ace king, ace queen, and they never cut their lady. Never. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I had just an ace king immunity that. That would make people <laughs> jealous. I mean, honestly. Uh, yeah. You, you'd make a lot of money if you could sell that kind of uh, ace king insurance on the open market. There you I go. Think. And just Seriously. get it in good and stay good. That's uh, that's priceless, man. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, thank but... you. Thank you for sharing that. That's a wonderful story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can call, you can follow me at poker cookie M if you want cookie monster stick. So, and there you some go. good Andrew picks too. I love it. I love it. Awesome. All right, Chris. Uh, All right. Well, let's. Let, should I get into Stake Study Stack? Yeah, uh, my soundboard isn't working for some reason, so uh, we don't All get right. the Batman uh, right. intro. I, but yeah, take it, it away. Do you want to make? You're such a good karaoke person. You want to just? There we go. This is right up my alley, guys. Thank you so much. All right, my wife will be shaking her head, rolling her eyes. Oh yeah, no, we get a lot of that around here. We get a lot yeah, of that yeah. around here. All yeah. right, I yeah. got, so, I'm ready for the stake and shake. Here we go. Okay, I got. I'm giving you give you three names. You give me one you want to stake in a poker tournament or a cash game. One you'd like to study with, and one where you just like to take all of their chips. Um, well, my fingers and, are crossed for that third one that he's in. Honestly, <laughs> I'm gonna give you. Th I'm gonna give you three names. Okay. Um, one uh, we mentioned off air uh, as a Foxwoods sort of legend. One uh, that you mentioned in the senior or the super seniors uh, high roller, and then another that I uh, caught uh, that you have some correspondence in your timeline. So your names are Nick Shulman, Daro Kearney, and Angela Jordison. Oh, you are brutal. <laughs> yeah, Chris brutal. is good at this. Chris is Come good at making you on. feel uncomfortable. Yeah, that that is. That is brutal. I cannot take out Angela Jordison because I've already done that. I'm not doing that. So 
I would like to study with Angela Jordison and and really get the the perspective from a different gender. I really don't know what those differences are. And we mm. need more women in poker. And she's a great, a great um advocate for that and and an ambassador for that. I would love to study with Angela. No doubt I would love to take out Nick Shulman and have Ali Najad doing the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that 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 seals the deal there. And obviously, Dara is a great student of the game. Um, he, I would, I would love to stake Dara. And I did meet with him. I did an interview with him. Fantastic guy. Yeah, yeah, a, a wrecking crew member, in fact, himself. Well, he worry, uh, is he? And he worries yeah, about yeah. what shirts he wears, which is a big thing for me. I was like getting dressed in front of the mirror every day, just getting it right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. How much blue well, did I need to wear? You know, look good, feel good, feel good, play good. Like it's oh, connected. Seriously. Yeah. It's definitely connected. Yeah. That that's why I bring the sports coat to every uh poker tournament because not only do I feel sharp, but I think it gets me about 20% more full than if I was just wearing a hoodie. 20% more full. I've done the math. I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Well, you Tony Dunst Tony Dunst would agree with you and, yeah. and I do too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well uh mark we're gonna close the action now with our speed round and then we'll uh give our guests a chance to sort of uh, find out where to follow along on your journey and um, enter into our, our food bank raffle i'm just going to remind folks the reason that we do this raffle at the end of each show is to just raise awareness for the need for food banks uh, all over the world particularly right now people are having a hard time putting food on the table for their families or for their children or for a loved one and uh, just like we try and take the stigma away from the word rec or recreational here at rec poker we also try and take the stigma away from just accepting some help when you need help and the best way to support the people in your own neighborhood and your own community is by just donating a few dollars from your pocket a few hours of your volunteer time in a week or some non-perishable food items uh, from your own pantry to a local food bank and if you just pull out your smartphone right now and google food banks near me uh, you'll find an organization nearby that could benefit from 100%. your help um, so i encourage everyone to to do that and um, if you just want to start typing the words food bank into our YouTube chat right now, you'll be entered into a raffle and we'll give away a fantastic prize at the end of the show. Um, but first, all right. So normally I would have uh, a soundboard set up and there'd be like a very dramatic TikTok effect and then the narrative tension would rise. Um, but as it is, we're just going to roll right into closing the action uh, with my man, Mark here. So Mark, we're looking for the the first true oh, answer hold on, hold on. that pops into your hold mind. On, yeah. Jim. Yeah, okay. You got to call I'm me here. Cookie from now on. All right, Cookie. You got to call me Cookie. I'm down, Cookie. All right, cookie. let's do it. That sounds good. All, All right. right, it's time. We're closing the action with the one and only Cookie. Uh, we'll start with an easy one. What is your favorite poker hand? Quick now. Five of clubs, seven of spades. Is poker a gamble or a skill game? Yes. It, what's your biggest poker pet peeve? People who angle, angle shoot. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes. Is Ace King a drawing hand? No, sir. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Absolutely, Jim. What's, <laughs> what's, what's, one, thing, what's one thing that you're afraid of? My wife. <laughs> Is a taco a sandwich? How about a taco? Of, Is a taco of a sandwich? Of course. Listen, um, my, my kids are half Hispanic. Tacos are sandwiches. Okay, that's I like it. Uh, should vacations be lazy or busy? Very, very lazy. Uh, who's one player that you respect? Um, Eric Seidel. Uh, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No, sir. Uh, there's a yellow light coming up. Slow down or speed up? That's a California green, sir. We're speaking. Right. <laughs> Are you pro chop or no chop? Um, I am pork chop. Uh, so of, I do not. Speaking... I really don't chop. So no. okay. No. Well, you know, I like the pork chop answer. Um, what about a calzone? Is a calzone a sandwich? A hundred percent. What about a pop tart? Is a pop tart a sandwich? No, that's a delicacy. That, we found a line. We found a line. He won't. He won't cross. Um, there you go. Finally, what cookie is your favorite kind of cookie? 
Oreos. Ah, that's a good answer. That's a strong answer. And then uh, the you. very last question, the very last question, take, you can take your time with this. We'll end, we'll end the speed right. round so you can factor in all your years of experience. Um, what is one thing that we can do, all of us, uh, to make our lives more fun, to make our time spent more enjoyable? What's one thing that we should all be doing to, to smile more and to laugh more and to make other people uh, smile and laugh more? I tell my friends, and and they really do agree. Look, anything that's non-life threatening is silly. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I really do take that into you know, poker hands are silly. I'm sorry, it's <laughs> it's not life threatening. And no matter how you cut it, you, you two out or one out or whatever, it's like it's all very silly. They're rectangles, and we're it. It's a very silly thing, and everything yeah. in life is silly if it's not threatening. Yep. I like it. Great answer. All right, Cookie. Uh, Thank you. The, I, the, I, it feels right calling you that. Uh, I'm Thank really you. enjoying Thank this. Thank you. So um, you're on Twitter. As it, is it the Cookie Monster or Steamboat Cookie Monster? Or what, where, where can folks well, find you if they want to get more cookie in their lives? I have re redone it as the Poker's Cookie Monster um, <laughs> or the Cookie Monster Poker. I don't know. But it is at <laughs> Poker Cookie M. Okay. Um, I was a little too late to the Twitter game to have at Cookie Monster and sure. But I wanted to add the poker part of it anyway, because it was all connected. Perfect. And I'll make sure that that link is in the show notes for folks to um, and uh, yeah, and the at collect. mark underscore checkwits where I talk a lot more about um the the gambler's mindset and you know, problem gambling. Yeah, fantastic. So I encourage folks to go check that out to get to know Mark a little better and to uh, to get a little more cooking into their lives. Uh, so, Mark, I want to say thank you again. We're going to stick around. We've got to we've got to catch up on some recent home game results and give away some prizes. Uh, you're welcome to stick around for that if you want to. But of course, uh, feel free to just hit the X and uh, and go on with your day. I know you've got a, a family and a lot going on with the rest of your life. This was an absolute yeah, I pleasure. That. And I, I hope we get a chance to talk again sometime soon. I I only want to say um, one thing um, and addressing the food bank part of it, mm. you know, I, I didn't even know you had this, this charity attached to rec poker, but I, I instantly knew that I wanted to have you take a portion of the money I made um, backing you to the charity of your choice. And, and also I just do want to give a shout out to teachers everywhere. Um, mm. Another portion of that winning it's going to go to my wife, a school teacher, um, who really just, they're fighting the fight for all of us to to educate critical thinkers, yes. um, which will make better poker players. We need more critical thinking poker players. They'll have more fun. The more yeah. you know, the more fun and, you have. You know, Cookie, I can't end this interview. We keep hitting stuff that we got to keep talking about. I, I know Chris is ready to roll the dice here, but you know, when when Steve Fredland, who originally founded Rec Poker, when he and I kind of developed what would become the new Rec Poker, we we set aside six goals for the organization. And the fifth goal in order of priority is to operate profitably at a business. There's a lot of things that are way more important than that. And one of them is to increase the number of people in the world who uh think cri like a critically analyze things to to, oh, to wow. build okay. the the critical analysis as a skill outside of poker um to create better you know citizens and uh the, to to use poker to kind of make the world a better place and so i really feel like it's just another way that you and i see eye to eye on a lot of this stuff so it's yeah been, it's i am, been very I am cool not surprised but i am i mean yeah. poker is the greatest metaphor for life yeah yeah uh yeah couldn't agree more all right Thank you. Uh, thank you, my man. This was a treat. Looking forward to next time. And uh, thanks so much for coming on the Rec Poker Podcast. Oh, thank and congratulations. You thank you. Thank you for your team, to your team also. Yeah. Thank you. All okay. right. It's, it's great to meet you. Great that's to meet it. you all. Take care. All right. Guys. Well, that's uh, Mark Chekwitz. You know him as the Cookie Monster and one of uh, the most recent gold bracelet winners at the World Series of Poker. So pretty phenomenal, uh, pretty phenomenal result and a fantastic guy. Looking forward to get to getting to know him a little better. I I just side note, I I watched that uh, that stream and I had not put together 
that that the the person who I watched on that stream was our guest tonight, and uh, it immediately hit me when we were starting to talk about the cookie thing. Um, yeah, so he has yeah. a very recognizable outfit in that run, but yeah. like, what, what a phenomenal run he had! I mean, that was yeah. a, a really fun table to watch, actually, and it was it was. Uh, it was I'm I'm glad we had him on tonight. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, just one of those great connections that you make when you're down there for summer camp. You know, we just yeah. happened to be in the same lounge and uh, uh, I he introduced himself to me and uh, I, I recognized his handle from Twitter. And I said, oh, yeah, you had a recent you had a, you did pretty well recently, didn't you? And he held up his left wrist and he was like, yeah, I had a pretty good run. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, We got to get this guy on the podcast. That was uh, too, too much fun. All right. Um. John Somsky, uh, I know you've got some exciting news about our home game club and also some new winners to announce. And then uh, we'll give away our fantastic prize here on the, on the show. Why don't you dive in? Yep. Uh, first, just a reminder, starting August 1st, we will be playing, having a home game every night, including every Thursday, night. Friday, and Saturday nights. All right. So get ready for that. <laughs> on July 10th, Bone Crusher 14, Marcel Dusik. Hmm won his first mixed event. Apple, oh, oh my, Harold Berry still maintains the player of the year points race lead. But I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think Bone Crusher got up to like third or he's in the top 10 anyway with that. Marcel's with been on a year. Way to go, man. Yep. Uh, then on uh, July 8th, we had our tournament of champions for the everyone who won a daily series tournament in june and jme tape joe malay oh yeah won the tournament of champions and got his very first silver pin amazing congratulations joe joe's been really applying himself over the last little while i know he and i've spoken a couple times over the last couple months and um it's it's showing he won his first bronze pin just last month then uh to take out everyone in the tournament of champions and to go get that silver pin uh, it's great to see. Couldn't happen to a better guy. So congratulations, Joe. And uh, those pins have already been mailed off, my man. So enjoy them and wear them with pride. So he was also asking me, wondering why, because his full name wasn't in the uh, the public stuff. And I want to just remind people that you have to go to the extended profile on your profile and then make sure that your first name and last name and PokerStars username are all public. As long as those are all public, then I will uh, present all of the information. If they're not, then unless Jim actually says your name because he knows you personally, <laughs> your name will be uh, withheld from the. Board. That's right, and 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 you know we do that to protect the privacy of our members. So if you haven't explicitly told us that you want your name to be made public, we're going to default to just referring to you by your Poker Stars username. Um, so if you if you have ever wondered why, like, hey, I won one of these nights and they didn't say my name on the show, it's just because you haven't expressly made that information public in your rec po poker profile. So uh, go ahead and do that. And we love sharing the whims uh, of our members with with our podcast audience. So congratulations to Joe uh, again. All right. Sorry, John. Continue, please. All right. Then on July 8th, LL Tahoe won his fourth nightly series victory nice. for the year. JB Twin Cities won her first uh, nightly series victory for nice. the year. JB, yeah. Roadstar color. 33 got his Brandy. third international victory for the year. Larson's opening George Borden got his fifth international victory for the year. Love that guy. And then Rob Man Rabman 50, Rob Washam uh -oh. won the LPP event. So wow. he can contact info Man. at rec.poker <laughs> for his free month at Learn Pro Poker. Whoa. Oh huh. boy! Wow, what do you know? Even a blind squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, man! That's fantastic. Thanks. Um, yeah, it was it was good. Now, before we go any further, we've got some other results, which are the oh. ROI results for June. Okay. Thank you, John, for providing the data. Because while I was out of town, I blew it, didn't gather it. So John was <laughs> able to help me out, and here we go. <laughs> so number one. This in June was Maddie Bumpo. Oh, sweet. 265%. And then yeah. a name that we just talked about, J.M.E. Tate. Wow. I don't know how he pronounces it, but it's Joe Malay. Yeah. In second place with 257% mm. ROI. Then Larson's opening, 
That's true. At 269%. Um, we have a wrecking crew member, Fergie 56 at 188. No there. And then running hot, 3430 came in fourth for 140. And Oslo Borger came in ah. fifth at 113% ROI for June. Tran Tron I don't Stensby. Tron Vidaris Stensby. Yeah. That's great. And I don't have the uh quarterlies done yet for the second quarter, but I'm working on it. And what Rob's talking about here, if you don't know at home, is all of our premium members are automatically tabulated. If you play at least four of our free home games in the month, then uh, Rob gets a, a report and we we award this top five premium members by ROI each month. And the winner gets to choose a podcast coming up to come join the panel and talk to their guest of their choice. So the winner for May was Christina Sukram, who uh, had the highest ROI amongst all premium members in the month of May. And uh, so we reached out to her and she's going to join us on August 12th when Greg Goes All In comes on the show, because that nice. was the guest that cool. she was most excited cool. to speak to. Um, and so congratulations to uh, Maddie Bumpo, I think, was the winner for June. So if you're if you're listening, uh, Maddie Bumpo, um, congratulations. I know you've been on a heck of a tear recently in the Home Game Club. Send an info, uh, send an email to jim at rec.poker, and I'll let you know who the upcoming guests are, and you can choose which guest's interview you'd like to participate in. And if uh, you're considering joining premium membership, uh, this is just one of the perks uh, you get to come on the pod and uh, uh, enter into the ROI tournament that Rob runs every month. And of course, there's a lot of other great stuff all available here at Rec Poker for only $22 a month. Or if you go annual, it's even less than 20 bucks a month. So I encourage folks to check that out. And, and I want to mention also George Borden, who was one of the players that won uh, a tournament this week and also one of your ROI players, Rob. So George has been a premium member here for a long time. And we recently raised our membership from $15 a month, which we've been charging for the last four or five years, up to $22 a month this summer. Uh, we've really increased the value of the premium membership. We've added a lot of coaches to the stable. We've got a, a huge archive of training material. And um, our, our costs have also increased as we've gotten larger as an organization. So um, we we upped the the membership price for two, for new members to twenty two dollars, uh, but all existing members were going to stay at their fifteen dollar price. So I got an email from George saying, "Hey guys, I love what you do at Rec Poker, and I want to help with keeping the lights on and helping you grow and be a sustainable organization. So even though I've been a premium member for a couple of years now, why don't you bump me up to that new price of twenty two dollars as well?" And um, he also said that he'd been encouraged by our conversations to make a donation to a local food bank in his own community. And I just wanted to shout out, George, uh, that email meant a lot to me. And I shared it with our other Wrecking Crew members. And to have members like yourself that, you know, really, I can tell, do appreciate the mission that we're on and the way that we're trying to make the poker world a better place. You know, my heart uh, grew two sizes that day. And um, I know it meant a lot to the rest of the crew here as well. So um, everyone else, if, if you're listening at home, if, you, if you're considering joining the premium membership, I mean, it's a great way. It, it's the best value on the market, I think, for sure. As a poker student, you'll get access to not only our training material, but that of some of the other best uh, training sites in the world that share their material with our members because they know how important it is to grow the game of recreational poker. Um, but it also helps us out a lot just to keep doing this. This is a labor of love. It's a largely volunteer-based project that a lot of us pour our, our heart and soul into week in and week out. And, um, you know, the more premium members we have, the easier it is for us to resource some of the projects that we think are important. And uh, just more, more likely it is that, I mean, we just released episode 600 of the podcast last week. And if we can make it to 700, it'll be because of people like George. So George Borden, thank you very much. And to all our premium members, your support uh, makes a huge difference in, in our lives and in the lives of everyone else who's a part of Rec Poker. So thank you. Um, all right. And got that. So on, so on, on, the, on that note, yes. I just want to take a minute to remind everybody about our Learning with Partners program. Yeah. You know, we regularly publish 15-minute clips from our partners' training sites, and they're available to all our premium members, right? 
Yeah. And so the most recent one I saw was a clip from Matt Affleck, who's been on the show a couple times and has shared some of his knowledge with us. And he's very, very good instructor, very good teacher. Really good. And he's with poker coaching and it was on squeezing. Mm. So check it out if you're a premium member. And if you want more of this type of training from Matt or any of the other pokercoaching.com pros, you can get a three, a free three day all access pass. Just go to Rec Poker website under the resources, click on learning partners, and you'll find all of our learning partners. And Poker Coaching is offering a three day free pass to all their content for signing up. Amazing. So do yeah. that. It's do it. Well worth it. That's right. And folks, if you're not taking advantage of our Learning with Partners program, I mean, you, you're a little bit crazy because, like I say, these are the best poker sites in the world. They share their material with our members, and then our members also get discounts to join their site. So you can you can get even more amazing uh, poker training material for even less money than you'd pay for it uh, out on the street. So, uh, yeah, come check us out. Give us a try. If you use the code uh, REC Poker, you get your first month for only five bucks. And uh if you don't leave after a month, you know, but I think you'll find a reason to stick around. We we have a lot of good stuff going on here. Um, all right, Chris, you've been so patient. Uh, let's give away uh, a prize. So this, uh, we give away a prize at the end of every week of the show. If you're not already a Rec Poker premium member, you're going to win a month of free membership here at Rec Poker. And if you are already a Rec Poker premium member, just one, another one of the perks is that we're going to bump up your prize to a free month at one of our fantastic learning partners. And, uh, we're just going to give it away to someone who typed the word food bank into the YouTube chat here. So, uh, Chris, I see the RRRCCC, Joe Rafter, B.O., and Carl Derry. That's only four names. Are those That's the four names you see as well? I got, I got well? a four-sided dice, so. Just show up, folks. You got a 25% chance of winning a great yeah. prize. All right, let's see what the Dice O'Cam has in mind for us tonight. Dice uh, Chris Jones has a two. It's a two. So I see that being Joe Rafter, if my math is correct. So, That's Joe, correct. Congratulations. Uh, please send an email to info at rec.poker and uh, we'll get you all squared away with your fantastic new prize. And thanks to everyone in the YouTube chat for participating in the show and uh, for making this a little more fun and for just helping us raise a little little awareness for a local food bank. Um, John, Chris, Rob, is there anything else that we should be mentioning that's this coming up i i wanted to mention one more thing as because we're talking about some members uh when you mentioned uh george i was remembered uh, reminded of one of our really great friends oh. a long time uh rec poker player and advocate and one of the greatest people that i've ever met in the game of poker uh george sanford you know he's I th he's struggling been, been struggling with a long-term illness um but he made his way uh to tick off that bucket list to play in the main event. Um, and I was just oh. so happy that he was able to do that. Uh, I know you got to see him there, uh, Jim. And um, it just uh, put put a little thought or prayer towards, towards George tonight. Um, yeah. We're all thinking of him. Uh, he's, he's a great guy. He is. And um, I did get to meet with George uh, uh, before I went on to day two i think and um he had he had busted uh, the night before on a bad beat but he uh he gave me a little token that i carried in my pocket uh, for the rest of the time that i was playing in the main and so the, george george and i managed to get uh, a little further and and to to experience some of those future days of of these of the main so yeah i was definitely uh, thinking about george sanford my tag team partner from a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And as you say, a great influence on uh, poker in Minnesota and uh, the rec poker community as well. So George, if you're listening, thanks again for just being a fantastic guy and a great, uh, a great person in the poker world. And it was a pleasure to be able to carry you along uh, on that journey. So uh, I well guess said, I Chris. may as well uh, make this a little bit longer. And I just want to uh, point out to people, if you have a hard time finding out where a food bank is to you, is neck near you, I have noticed that around here, at least, several grocery stores have prepackaged bags mm. that are have been packed for the food banks. You can just grab them, bring them to the checkout. They'll put them and deliver them to the food bank for you. Makes it super easy. 
as you're just walking through the grocery store, if you see one of those and pick it up, it's an easy way to handle it without having to, you know, figure out where to send a check or all of that type of stuff. So just something to keep an eye out for if you want to look for another way to help your local food bank. Thanks, John. And I also should say that, um, you know, we mentioned that we raised our price uh, recently for premium membership here at Rec Poker, but we will also give anyone a free month of membership if they make a donation to their local food bank of any amount. So if $22 is too much in your in your pocket to join Rec Poker and be a premium member, seriously, send me an, uh, send me a screenshot of you donating a dollar or more to a local food bank and uh, we'll make sure that you get a free month of premium membership. And if you send me another receipt the next month for another dollar, uh, we'll give you another membership, uh, another month of membership here. So um, help yourself, help some folks in need in your own uh, community and come join the fun here. Uh, you could you could be a member for as little as a dollar if you uh, spend it in the right place. So, um, all right. I think surely now uh, we can wrap this puppy up. We've got to go record the forums edition of the podcast in a few minutes. So uh, without further ado, thank you so much to uh, the Running Aces Hotel Racetrack and Casino. We uh, really appreciate their support. Um, John Somsky, Rob Washam, Chris Jones, the Cookie Monster himself, all you in the YouTube chat and our listeners at home. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week on the Rush Over Podcast.